Pay close attention. The news you are about to see is fulfilling Bible prophecy. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you news as it relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Israel Hawkins. Jeff, we have some interesting articles today. Uh, the government listening in on phone conversations as well as spying on you through the internet. We also have a little bit of reports from a recent shooting taking place on the West Coast, California, and a new uh, virus. Deadly virus. Deadly yep. virus. Hmm, interesting. Well, Verizon Share Everything plan took on a whole new meaning this week for its customers. It was revealed that Verizon has been sharing the phone records of millions with U.S. intelligence. This surveillance was not limited to phone calls, but extended to the Internet as well. Now, all of this was done by court order, so federal agents could examine the pattern of calls, not necessarily listen in on your calls. Mm, so they say. The National Security Agency operating under secret court orders to spoil suspected terror plots was authorized to track calls to and from phone numbers of millions of Americans. Even Americans not tied to any terror investigations were tracked. The Obama administration is insisting it did not listen to the conversations or record the names of the callers, but rather looked for patterns. The program was approved by the Secret Foreign Intelligence Court located inside the federal courthouse in Washington. Verizon is not the only major telephone company under surveillance. Counterterrorism experts said this surveillance is ongoing and involves most major telephone companies. Wisconsin Republican James Sensenbrenner, who wrote many of the legal rules concerning such data collection, says it's a huge overreach and it's abuse of the powers that have been given to the government. Not everyone agrees with Republican Sensenbrenner. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid stated, right now, I think everyone should just calm down and understand this isn't anything brand new. It's been going on for some seven years. Lindsey Graham, a uh, South Carolina Republican, did not object either. He said, I'm a Verizon customer. It doesn't bother me one bit for the National Security Administration to have my phone number because what they're trying to do is find out what terrorist groups we know about and individuals and who the hell they're calling, Mr. Graham said. So what does the government say they're doing with all this information from millions of phone records? Well, they look at the terrorist phone numbers overseas and then they run those against all the data collected and learn how many numbers in the United States are talking to known terrorist numbers overseas. Now from there it would go to the next step, which might be a subpoena or a letter from the NSA or something that would get the actual information about the people behind those numbers. Sounds like a lot of work. Those who are not opposed to the government looking at their phone records believe their privacy is not jeopardized because they're not dealing with names, they're dealing with numbers. The connection between a name and a number is not made until it actually connects some to terrorist plots. In response to these events, the president in San Jose, California had this to say. No one is listening to your telephone calls. That's not what this is about. As was indicated, the intelligence community is looking at phone numbers and duration of calls. They are not looking at people's names, and they are not looking at the content. Mr. Obama was also asked regarding classified information that was released by the Washington Post and the Guardian newspapers, which exposed a government surveillance program that targets the Internet. He said, this does not apply to U.S. citizens, and this does not apply to people living in the United States. He continued, not only is Congress fully apprised of it, but what is also true is the FISA court has to authorize it. The FISA court that the president mentioned is a court that grants warrants for surveillance in national security cases. The Internet surveillance program is called PRISM. Interesting. Uh, PRISM allows the National Security Agency to tap into the databanks of Internet companies in search of foreign terrorists. 
Uh, slides obtained by the Washington Post detail how the program works, as well as lists of the companies, including Microsoft, Google, and Apple, and the data that they provide to the government. Under a court order that compels companies to cooperate, analysts working for NSA headquarters in Fort Meade, Maryland, key in search terms that are designed to turn up suspicious communication amongst foreigners. Although the targets are overseas, much of the internet traffic flows through the U.S., therefore the monitoring takes place on American soil. James Clapper, the director of National Intelligence, said PRISM cannot be used to intentionally target any U.S. citizen. But, uh, Jeff, the key word there is intentionally, since most of us have experienced how easy it is to get caught up in some type of email chain, and then all of a sudden your name is linked to something that you have no idea what it is. Because of the trillions of pieces of data that is picked up each year, the NSA is building a $2 billion facility in Utah to store it all. Authorities have said that PRISM scooped up one major terrorist, Najabala Zazi, who planned in 2009 to plant backpack bombs on New York City subways. Now apparently he was making the explosives. He sent an email to Rashid Raf, an Al-Qaeda bomb maker, explaining that he didn't know the right amounts to use and he gave his phone number. Mm. Therefore, that intelligence was used to arrest him. Wow. All internet companies involved deny giving unlimited access to the government to their user accounts and they insist they only turned over information in response to court orders. For years, these surveillance programs remained secret until an unknown source leaked information to Glenn Greenwald, a columnist at the British newspaper The Guardian. Greenwald has argued against expanding government access to our personal records. Of course, he wouldn't reveal his source in an interview with CBS. That source sent him top secret information of a government court order compelling Verizon to hand over phone records on an ongoing daily basis. Government sources say such leaks can have consequences, fearing that information made public causes terrorists to change the way they function. Greenwald has also recently released another story re revealing a presidential directive in which the president orders his senior national security and intelligence officers to draw up a list of potential overseas targets for U.S. cyber attacks. John Miller, a CBS News correspondent, said the NSA will do an internal investigation to see who had access to these documents, who copied them, downloaded them, etc. Right, right. Uh, from there, he said the Department of Justice will do a criminal referral, see if this meets the criteria, then they're going to send that over to the FBI. And of course, their counterintelligence department will open up a criminal case and start to question people. Now, because of the top secret nature of these documents, Miller continued, the FBI will be going to the NSA and other agencies that have access to these documents, questioning people to see if they've spoken to the press. And of course, that would lead to people being uh, polygraphed. And of course, they could be put under oath and be sent before the grand jury. There had, now, there has been a, another deadly shooting this, this week, this time in Southern California, near a community college. Now, just before noon, witnesses say a gunman started shooting randomly at cars and students on the campus of Santa Monica College. Joe Orca, who was just a few feet from the gunman, told ABC News, he looked at me and then he just panned over with his gun. I jumped out of the way and he shot at me. He just seemed very calm, he continued. He wasn't fidgety, he wasn't moving around a whole lot. He was just standing there, panning around, looking for targets. Mm, sounds pretty calculated. Another witness said the man was armed with more than one weapon when he first opened fire on the street, then on campus. He said, I was in my car and a guy on the left side of the street jumped out of a car with a big black gun and started blasting rounds at all of our cars and the buildings and the bus. Now the gunman was eventually cornered by police in the library and killed. Investigators confirmed that the gunman had set a house on fire prior to going on his shooting rampage. Two people were found dead inside the house. In all, six victims died in this tragedy and police continue to search for clues. Now there is also speculation, Katan, that the shooter may not have acted alone. Hmm. In other news, a new deadly virus has surfaced that a top public health investigator calls a threat to the entire world. One reason so many are fearful is because there is no known treatment and no vaccine. 
People who have this virus should be isolated for at least 12 days to keep from spreading it. This new respiratory virus, known as MERS, has sickened 49 people so far, with over half of them, 27, dying. Now, symptoms begin much like the flu, including fever, chills, and muscle aches, but then they get rapidly more serious, including difficult breathing. The potential for this disease to spread like the SARS virus did 10 years ago have many people very, very concerned. Right. Now, if you recall what took place with the SARS virus, one individual in a Hong Kong hotel infected 12 other guests, who in turn flew out of Hong Kong, and within the following nine months, there were more than 8,000 cases all over the world, and 700 of those people died as a result. Containment is the only line of defense for this new virus, MERS, but if that fails, the results could be catastrophic. Well, speaking of diseases, the actor Michael Douglas says that the throat cancer he was diagnosed with in 2010 may have been caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. Now, one way HPV can be transmitted is through oral sex. The CDC says that about 79 million Americans are infected with the virus. HPV can, ca can cause genital warts and several types of cancers, including throat cancers. Mm. You know, now, sadly, Catan, all of these things that we spoke about tonight, the shootings, the diseases, even the phone monitoring could be eliminated if mankind would begin practicing the character education program that Yushua Hawkins of the House of Yahweh has been teaching for many years now called the Peaceful Solution. Now in this program you will find all the answers to today's problems and what you can do to start having peace in your life. Don't wait another day to find out about this program. Begin reading for yourself about the only answers that can stop this sickness, hatred, and misery in the world today. Call or write the House of Yahweh and request your free copy of the Prophetic Word magazine and monthly newsletter. You can write them at the House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can also give them a call at 1-800-613-9494, or you can visit them on the web at www.yahweh.com or www.yisroelhawkins.com. You can also email them at info at yahweh.com. And of course, all calls outside the United States, please dial the number on your screen. Don't go anywhere. Up next is Yisrael Hawkins explaining Bible prophecy. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. And I'm Katan Alexander. Thanks for joining us.